Welcome back to another Nate and Tech vlog. Today we're going to be figuring out what transmission came with the B16 that I just got for Suki, which is my 91 sedan. Uh, picked this up on a deal I couldn't pass up. The guy thinks that it had a GSR transmission. It's been through a couple hands since I built the B16 back in uh, 2015. We're going to go into a lot of the specs and stuff. Uh, when we actually get into the motor here in the next video or two. But today I really wanted to figure out what transmission it has uh, so I know if I need to track down another transmission. I am looking for an LS transmission mainly because I'm going to be traveling a lot with this car. Hopefully across you know a lot over the Northwest to a lot of shows, things like that. So I want something with a little bit better gearing ratio and I don't like the short gears because it just feels like I'm shifting all the time. So I wanted something that has a little bit longer gears, uh, just personal preference. I don't plan on dragging this car, uh, or racing it really, so the the nice kind of even gears throughout, at least to me, is kind of what I was looking for. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to tell uh, without using, there's really not much markings on the old cable transmissions for D and B for, for that matter. Uh, so what I did was I went through and calculated some of the gear ratios and I built a spreadsheet and what you do is you put the transmission in third gear and you rotate the input shaft uh, until the output shaft rotates one full rotation. You count the input shaft rotations which are usually five plus on, in third gear and it tells you what transmission you've got, at least very close. There's a couple that are close but for the most part it will give you a very good idea of what transmission it is, whether it's the Type R, which I don't think they had in the cables. So you're basically looking at a GSR, B16, or an LS uh, versions in the cable, which is which is what this one is. Um, I'm hoping for an LS, but we'll we'll figure it out. So we're gonna go ahead and hop over, and I'll show you what we're gonna do on the transmission, and go from there. Uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that bell so you guys see whenever I'm putting videos out, I'm gonna be doing a lot more now that we've got the motor for Suki coming in. Um, I actually have it sitting over here right now. We've already gotten started on a couple things. And, uh, but today we're gonna to show you how to do the transmission side of it. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do after marking the input and output shafts, do two pieces of tape, one stationary, one on the shaft, one inside the differential, and then one on the seal, and then mark them each with a permanent marker. I'll zoom in on this here in a second when we actually start rotating it. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your shifter and put it in third. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull it this way um, to put it in third. So when you got your shifter and you push forward, um, it's actually, and when you push forward on this, it's actually pulling the shaft back because you've got a, a pivot point on your shifter. So pull this all the way this way without twisting it at all. That puts you in third. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and we're gonna count how many times this spins when this rotates one full rotation. And right, here we go. One, two, three, Four, five, and that's almost right there. So almost exactly five and a half turns. Let's uh, look at our sheet and see what that see what that says. Okay, so we know the input shaft turns five and a half times for every time the output shaft turns once. So according to the spreadsheet, and post it up right here, it is an LS transmission, which is what I was hoping for. Um, my buddy was kind of hoping it was a GSR because he has an LS that he would trade me straight across for, but I don't want a GSR and I don't want the, the B16. The first couple gears are just too short for me and I just feel like I'm shifting through them all the time. So this is what I was hoping for. It's great. And we're gonna get this thing cleaned up because you can tell from the video. Earlier, it is pretty dirty. Um, this motor had a very evasive oil leak that none of me or the last two owners were able to figure out. I finally noticed it once we pulled the car out. If you guys actually follow me on Instagram, you'll see the picture that I posted of the valve cover that is bent. 
Uh, looks like somebody pried, and they just pry up on it. They actually pry out, uh, so it doesn't even hold up tight against the the cam cap. I'll post a picture of it here real quick for you guys, so you can see that. Um, so anyway, I didn't notice until I actually got the motor out of the car and looked down the valve cover, and you could see where the the gap is actually there. Uh, so anyway, I've got another valve cover. I've got the holes drilled. Actually, here, let me grab it for you guys. So I've got the holes drilled in it for the AN10 fittings. So I can get a uh, catch can hooked up to it for when it's boosted. So we got a little more ventilation. I also have one off the rear. Uh, picked up this guy. That goes, it's an AN10 fitting that replaces the factory catch can. So I'm gonna run that as well. Um, uh, so the other thing that you have to know on the B16, and this is this calculation that I did, uh, and I'll make this file available to anybody that, that wants it on the website. Just go to natantech.com, check, uh, the how to section at the top and it'll be this video vlog number 21 and it'll have the links inside that inside on that page. And the other thing, the only other thing that the B series have between the 9091 and then the 9293, the 92, the only way to tell the difference between the two, at least easily, is if you look at the bottom of the casing, there are two, they're the 12 or 14 millimeter bolts. Uh, they hold the little, um, it's like a bearing, but just a, just a ball from the bearing. And your, your shifter arms, when they move, it, it's the little divots so you can feel like when you go into third, it's got the three divots. Um, the 9090, the 9091 does not have those. The 90, the 9293 does. And I'll post up pictures here with markings on them so you guys can see the easy way to tell the difference because they do have different input shaft sizes. So it helps you know which clutch you need to order. That's pretty much really, that's all it's for. It doesn't have anything to do with your gear ratios and stuff. They're pretty much the same through the whole 90 to 93 series. Uh, the Excel spreadsheet does have the D series at the bottom, uh, which has like your HF, uh, your, your LX, DX, your EXSI, and I think there was one more in there. It, it, it's all listed there. Um, like I said, I'll make that file available to anybody that wants it. Make sure you subscribe. I do have a bunch of videos coming out for a bunch of vlog videos coming out for Suki because we're going to be getting going on the B16, getting it all cleaned up, uh, getting the valve cover done, repowder coated pink, and the intake manifold will be done pink as well. I've got a skunk, skunk to intake manifold. The rest of it's going to be kind of a gunmetalish gray uh, paint for the rest of it, and the turbo things like that. So uh, a lot of plans going on, a lot of videos coming out as we work on that and get it put in the car. Hopefully within the next three to four weeks. And uh, so anyway, there's a lot of work to be going on. I'm going to try to record as much as I can of it. So stay tuned. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell so you know whenever I reach the, uh, release a new video. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Natantech.com for any of the products that we make and how-tos that I will be releasing here soon. And we will see you next time.